summer, and men feel the need to gather wood and feast. This specimen, the greater spotted Gilchrist, is trying to impress the herd. To confirm his alpha male status, he now needs to make fire. His display does not impress the females. A misplaced matchbox means he's denied the chance of posturing and beating his chest all evening. But this doesn't mean he hasn't got a very nice country barbecue planned for us. Uh, I've got some slow cooked rabbit that I'm going to wrap, wrap in bacon, cook that over the fire. So all you're doing with the rabbit really is reheating it. We've got some wood pigeon that Phil Spencer shot yesterday. We'll put those on skewers, do them over the fire. We've got some venison burgers for the kids. I've got some homemade tomato ketchup for them. Uh, buns, salad, all that sort of stuff. Uh, and I've got a line caught sea bass that uh, my uncle picked up for us yesterday. So I'll fillet that out. Um, we can either pan fry it or I'll fillet it, pin bone it, and then wrap it up with some butter and lemon and tarragon, wrap it in foil and just chuck it on the embers for a bit. While the beer chills in the stream, Mark has to avoid the natural defences of this beautiful bass caught off the Kent coast by his uncle. So the first thing I do is cut all these spikes off. Now, you always want to be really careful with sea bass because the one thing they don't tell you is these spikes and they will go straight through your fingers. The gill plates in here are like razor blades, so you want to be careful of those. The spikes, there's a spike in there, there's a spike in there, and the spikes there. So all of the first thing we'll do is cut all of those off. Okay? This chap at the back here just by his bum, he's got spikes. How difficult is it when you're landing them to avoid spikes? Not? What we tend to do is put a towel around them. So if you put a towel around them and you it holds the spikes flat, you see what I mean? So also as you lift them up, they, they will lift, flare all their, fly, their spikes out. Put a towel around them, pull it down slightly. All the spikes then go flat, then you can hold it. But sort of thing, if you drop it, don't try and catch it because obviously as it falls, it'll lift all its spikes out again. Then you put your hand out and it goes straight in your hand, so just let it fall on the deck. Um, but even even the the baby schoolies, they've got tiny little spikes, but they still go straight through you. Um, Ryan, then you want to just take these up. Yeah, can we get some water on it? What it's been eating. It feels like a squid or something in there. Was it a whole crab? It's in there. It's whole crabs, look. Soft, feeding them. soft shell crabs are a top bait for, for bass fishing. Yeah, aren't these are these aren't that soft. Well maybe they are. Yes, little, little crabs is appealing. That is a, is, a, is a pin bone, okay? So you want to get a decent set of pliers. See, got that? Those are pin bones and they, they tend to snap and go straight up the roof of your mouth. <clears throat> and they can be quite tough to get out. The now flat embers give Mark a surface to fry down. the first of the bass fillet portion. The second will be cooked whole in its own juices. Also on the go are pigeon kebabs made from the birds from Phil Spencer and Cromant. Literally skewering it and what I'm going to do is not overcook it which is a problem people do with pigeon, especially on a barbecue. We're gonna, it's better off to take it out and realise that it needs a little bit longer than uh, overcook it because once overcooked it's ruined. So you have I'm to make just, sure the vegetables are cut the right size so they don't end up raw. Is that a criticism, Dom? I'm just, just asking you, you're the you chef. Sh you should do, yeah. <laughs> I'm hoping everyone's going to have a, uh, have had enough to eat, they're not going to notice. No, that, that should be about about right. They're being done on a conventional barbecue. Sporting Shooter magazine editor Dom Holtzum has brought along a bit of kit that should put an end to one in four sausages in the UK that end up with a grass clipping topping. So this is this is uh, this is a device known as a pie iron, um, which I saw in the Bushware catalogue. Um, and when we were doing this feature, I thought, oh, you know, a pie iron sounds too good not to include, especially when it turned up and it said it was a dog and brat cooker. Um, talking of which, of course you can. You might end up in there if you're not careful. 
Oh, sorry, what did you say? So the idea is that it's it's cast iron. They do them for sandwiches, they do them for steaks, they do them for burgers. Um, so you put your ingredients in, close it up, put it in the embers of your campfire, uh, and the cast iron helps it to cook nice and evenly. And uh, hopefully in 10 minutes there'll be something edible. But give it a go. Pie irons. Now for a piece of rabbit. But what will the children think? The source of the white meat is not discussed at this point. So what does the rabbit leg taste like? It kind of tastes like chicken. Aha! Really? Who'd have thought? So what does Mark think of his creations? Mmm. Oh, man. Mmm. Oh, man. Oh, that's beautiful. It's been a right royal feast and there really is something very special about eating and drinking in the great British outdoors. Even the little ones get to play at being caveman for a few hours. All of Mark's recipes will be in next month's Sporting Shooter.